iSARMS.com, the number one place to learn about SARMS online. Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. And uh, in today's video, I want to talk to you about prolactin. Now, uh, many of you know that when you use any 19 NOR steroid, which most commonly would be Trenbolone, Decadurabolin, NPP, these are 19 NORs. And when you take these type of steroids, another concern that you're gonna have is prolactin increases um, and you're also going to have to worry about this when you're taking GHR products um, or many HGH related products. Uh, prolactin be can, can become an issue there as well. Now many of you have heard of it but you don't really know exactly what it is. Many of us know what to take to prevent it but but what is it? What are the what are the side like what causes it? What are the main side effects from it? What happens if you have too much? What happens if you have too little? Um, how do you control it? That all of these questions, I don't think many of us really know or have really thought about. But I thought it would be very pertinent to get into detail and kind of explain it, so there was a better understanding um, on what prolactin really is and and how it works. Um, so. Just to get right to it, prolactin itself is a hormone, okay, and it's actually produced by the pituitary gland. Now, it's it's named prolactin um, because of its role in overall and actual lactation. It actually has other wide-ranging functions in the body. Um, it acts on the reproductive system, and it actually influences the behavior and uh, regulates the immune system. So some other names for prolactin that you might hear out there, um, the milk hormone, uh, PRL, uh, lutotropic hormone, LTH, these are other ways and phrases that prolactin is known as. So what is prolactin? It's a hormone and it's named uh, originally after its function to promote milk, which is lactation in mammals in response to the sucking of young after birth. So. It's been since then to shown to have more than 300 different types of functions in the body. Um, these, there, there's a number of areas of these, but overall 300 different types of functions. Now, in humans, prolactin is produced both in the front portion of the pituitary gland and in a range of sites elsewhere in the body. So lactotroph cells in the pituitary gland actually produce the prolactin, and they're stored in small containers called vesicles. Now, prolactin is actually released into the bloodstream by a process called exocytosis, okay? Human prolactin is also produced in the uterus, immune cells, brains, breasts, prostate, skin, and adipose tissue. So, how is prolactin actually controlled? Well, one of the main regulators of the production of prolactin from the pituitary gland is the hormone that's, that's referred to as dopamine, and that's produced by the hypothalamus. Now, the part of the brain directly above the pituitary gland. So dopamine re restrains prolactin production, and so the more dopamine there is, the less prolactin is actually released. Now prolactin itself actually enhances the secretion of dopamine, so this creates an overall negative feedback loop. Now, oestrogen is another key regulator of prolactin. It's actually been shown to increase the production and secretion of prolactin from the pituitary gland now. Studies have actually shown small increases in prolactin in the blood circulation of women during stages of their reproductive cycle where oestrogen levels are at their highest. This is also the case during and after pregnancy which makes sense because a higher level of circulating prolactin is needed to cause lactation to even start. So. In, in addition to the dopamine and the oestrogen that I've talked about, a whole wide range of other hormones can both increase and decrease the amount of prolactin um, that's actually released in the body. So uh, some of these examples would be like an antidiuretic hormone, oxytocin, these are all examples. So what happens to you if you have too much prolactin? So the condition of having too much prolactin circulating in the body um, is called hyper prolactin anemia. Now, the most common causes of this include pregnancy, medications that are going to reduce dopamine, actions in the body, uh, thyroid underbactivity, 
uh, benign pituitary tumors. These are all things that can cause increases of prolactin. Now we all know, as I touched on earlier, the steroids, trembolone, decadurabolin, NPP, anything that's a 19 and OR can also cause increases in prolactin. And that's why we're talking about this in general. To actually treat this, that's where the Dostonex comes into play. Um, it's also known as cabergoline. Now, this is gonna be the most effective treatment remedy or method at actually helping to clear up the prolactin levels or get them back in the right range. Now, promiprexol is another option. Now, along with promiprexol, you're gonna have a lot of unwanted side effects. So this is something that you need to be aware of. Um, but these are both things that you can utilize to help control your prolactin, but Dostonex is the number one option, also known as cabergoline. Um, that's going to be your best bet at controlling and treating prolactin. So, what happens if you have too little prolactin? Um, this is actually called hypo instead of hyperprolactin anemia. Um, that is what we are looking at when you have too little prolactin. This condition is actually very rare and it may occur in people that have a pituitary like underactivity, so to speak. Now, a decrease in the amount of prolactin secreted can lead to insufficient milk being produced after giving birth. Now, most people with low prolactin levels uh, are not gonna have any specific medical problems, although preliminary evidence is gonna suggest that they might have reduced immune responses to some infections. So, this is prolactin defined. This is what it is. This is what the negative things to worry about that come along with it when you have it too high, what to worry about when you have it too low, what to take to treat it, etc. This covers it, this explains it. Um, a lot of us just don't really know all about it. So I really wanted to get into detail and cover it all more scientifically for you so that you understand exactly what it is. Dylan Gemelli, signing off.